have the very rare opportunity to talk to a new member of the staff at the Indiana Regional Medical Center, a new chief medical officer. As a matter of fact, Dr. Richard Neff is on the line with us. Our conversation brought to you by Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. Good morning. Good morning, sir. It's good to have you on the air with us today and to meet you, introduce you, if you will, to the uh, Indiana community. Um, and you've been here for how long? Been here just um, since just before uh, Halloween. So just before we'll be, Halloween. Okay. Almost two months now. All right, uh, boy, did you come at a happy time, huh? <laughs> it's it it has been a wonderful reception coming to, coming to town here. Well, that's good to know because uh, it is certainly a time when there are challenges uh, all throughout the the medical world, and certainly Indiana Regional Medical Center is uh, fighting a bunch of those battles uh, during this COVID nineteen pandemic. Uh, when you got here to the Indiana Regional Medical Center, uh, I'm sure you knew what you were getting into. How did you find the organization and the way that it is uh, dealing with COVID nineteen? Is it um, uh, pretty much on par with the way the entire industry is doing it? One of the things that I found in my, both in my interviewing coming here and also since I've arrived that has been confirmed is that Indiana Regional Medical Center has been um, very well led by an, an excellent collaborative leadership team and is staffed by physicians and providers and nurses and all staff across the, the board that have been working really hard together to be, to be able to be prepared for uh, this surge that we all knew was coming. Um, I've been very impressed by um, what was done before me by Dr. Bush and the other leaders here and by the extremely hard work of all of us staff um, and here. It's completely, absolutely uh, unprecedented what has happened in the, in the medical world and in, in all of the world in 2020. And, and I'm sure nobody finds themselves completely prepared when a pandemic hits. Um, but uh, in an overall medical sense, uh, the United States and its response to COVID-19, uh, the rapidity with which we have uh, developed a vaccine that will soon be rolling out, has to be pretty impressive uh, to, to you as a medical professional. It, it actually is. The, the science behind the evaluation and, and development of that vaccine, of the vaccines that are, that are coming out is um, quite impressive. And the collaborations here locally that we have been able to do with um, Dr. Barathon at IUP to be able to, to have ready, easy testing here for patients in the, the Indiana County community um, to be able to get results really quickly, that has been impressive as well. The last week, two or three weeks actually, have uh, been, been quite challenging all throughout the medical world. And certainly Indiana Regional Medical Center has had its issues as well. Um, the overall morale of the people who are fighting this battle, they're right there in the front line with you uh, through this pandemic, um, is, is another thing that I find very, very impressive. But uh, there is a, a lot of pressure uh, on people working at IRMC to make sure that they're offering the services in the safest and cleanest way that uh, they possibly can. Uh, and uh, and I know that, that that's a daily battle, isn't it? It It, it is, and it's, it's also extremely tiring. The, the One of the problems with um, a virus like like this is that you have a broad range of reactions to it. You have people have for, that are, are relatively young and healthy that have a, a mild um, illness, and then you have a a, a, no, a large number of people that are, are are a little bit older and with some medical conditions, and some of those people can get very sick, um, and it's been very hard to be able to have that known. Especially because the symptoms can be, you can be asymptomatic and be passing it to your your family and friends without yeah. even knowing it. Dr. Richard Neff, the CMO at the Indiana Regional Medical Center, joining us here this morning with the surge in recent days, and and especially uh, during this week, we're seeing some numbers uh, that are concerning uh, to all, and I know they are concerning to you as well. Um, are you at all concerned that IRMC is going to be overrun as uh, some? Hospitals uh, say that they are uh, are possibly going to face that situation. Are you pretty confident that IRMC can handle whatever comes? Um, no health system can handle whatever whatever comes, um, and I don't think that we are any different whatsoever. I think what you've seen in, in other hospitals in the in the region to the east of us, um, many hospitals are having a significant amount of trouble, and there's there's we're bringing in extra staff. We're 
um, figuring out new ways of working. We're, we are having a great reaction from staff members of the practices that are aligned with um, IRMC and having staff coming in to be helping hands in the hospital. Um, and it's been a great effort. Um, but the, the reality is, is that I don't know that anybody is going to be able to be immune from the potential of having some extremely hard times in the next couple of weeks. So, you know, the vaccine is fantastic. We have um, a, a deep, low-temperature freezer here on site. It's up and running and doing well and prepared to be able to accept vaccine. But as we, as we all know, that the, there's not going to be sufficient vaccine um, initially to be able to change our uh, behaviors and to be able to stop um, doing what we all have to do, you know, wearing a mask, you know, doing the social distancing, gathering together, you know, only in small household groups, uh, for the next, you know, next several months at least. Um, With the vaccine, of course, um, there, you know, rumor control has to be a big part of what you do, and um, the uh, the ability to to get the message out. Uh, uh, there are such high hopes for the vaccine, and uh, there there may be a general feeling that okay, the vaccine's here. I just need to show up at the hospital or show up at the doctor's office, and they'll be able to poke me in the arm, and I'm done. Uh, it's not that way, uh, and there are all kinds of different uh, rumors floating about Indiana Regional Medical Centers uh, at uh, the very near the top of the list to get the vaccine. Uh, they're down in the pack. They're at the end of the list. Uh, all of those things are issues that uh, have to be controlled. The message has to be really, really pristine when it gets out to the public so that there aren't any uh, mis-expectations about what will happen. Is that true? That, that's very true, and, and the the. CDC has set out guidelines for who gets the who gets prioritized for the vaccine first. And first and foremost, we need those frontline workers, um, the nurses, the EMTs, the care home workers, and the um, those that are most at risk, the, the elderly living together in communal situations. Those those all need to be the, some of the first people to get the vaccine. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll wait, and uh, IRMC will get the news out as it becomes uh, available and hopefully soon it will be readily available it'll be just a matter of months uh, that we're hoping that uh, mass inoculations will be able to take place but you know what you're doing at the indiana regional medical center uh, can't always and forever be about covid19 there is the settling into of the community there's the the leadership of the uh, medical community at the indiana regional medical center uh, and, and so let's look into the future where we're not talking every single moment of every single day about COVID-19 and uh, what your hopes and dreams are for coming to IRMC and what you can bring to Indiana County. One of the things that I very much appreciated with this team that is leading this hospital is the, the fact that as a small regional healthcare community and hospital, we've been this hospital has been able to, to bring advanced medicine here to the Indiana County region to be able to care for, for the people that we have here in, in ways that you don't need to go to Pittsburgh for many things. We have um, some things we're able to do here locally. We have an amazing robotics program, which is reducing lengths of stay in the hospital and, and um, being able to have people heal faster for that. We have um, a fabulous collaboration with uh, UPCM Hillman for our cancer center, able to do advanced care here with some young, um, fantastic physicians that are, that are there. We have a, the Human um, Motion Institute that, that's there that's providing some advanced orthopedic and um, pain control um, work that's there. It's, it's, it's exciting time to be here. Um, yeah, it really is. Uh, the cardiac program, uh, and the upgrades in it over the years as well. Those are all advances that, as you say, uh, make it so that uh, people used to have to go to Pittsburgh to get these services, and we think of the patient having to go, but then the family has that daily journey that they go to, to be with their loved one who is uh, in the hospital in Pittsburgh. That isn't necessary anymore. And, uh, and those, those different affiliations you announced and, and the way that healthcare is evolving in Indiana County, it's a pretty exciting time, and the facilities... Uh, the the operating suites, uh, the ER, the the continual upgrade, uh, that's just impressive to me as an outsider. You getting there on the inside, uh, that has to be uh, pretty eye opening for you as well. The 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 fact that 
this community has pulled together to be able to help support the hospital and in, in ways over a longer long period of time to be able to have um, advanced, clean, ready to, to work facilities has been, been really, really amazing to see. And, and it, it helps to make people feel better to be able to be at work, to be able to work in, in advanced areas that are well-built and well-cared for. And we certainly want to highlight the cancer uh, efforts as well, the breast cancer and other cancers uh, that through the UPMC Hillman affiliation, how, how vital that is for Indiana County. So here you are in Indiana. I haven't asked you about uh, your impressions of the community as a whole. I know that you were here in the summertime uh, and you got to see us when it was warm enough to, to get a, a little bit of a picture of Indiana. How, how do you like it so far? Well, I, I grew up in Pennsylvania, and so coming back here to Pennsylvania has been a, been a joy. My wife and I drove across um, the country to get here, and when we entered Pennsylvania in the, in the, the fall, we were here right at the peak of, of the fall colors in the, in the leaves, and we just have sighed a huge sigh of relief to be able to be back in, um, back in Pennsylvania. And that we what what parts of the town that I've we have been able to explore and and um, see have been been an awful lot of fun. Well, that's terrific news. Terrific news. We are so looking forward to having you here in Indiana, and uh, hope that it's for a very very long time. Dr. Richard Neff, thank you so much for joining us this morning on Indiana in the Morning. Thank you, Mr. Marino. Have a fantastic day. Thanks, and you too. It is the voice of Indiana County WCCS. CCS.